Welcome back, everyone, to Cheezadelphia Summer 2016. I am Drenok, joined by Poke Bunny. Currently, he's in the round of eight, I believe, and he's going to be doing some analytical commentary and commentating with us. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Nick, as he said. Uh, I'm a Terran player in the round of eight so far here at Cheezadelphia. Having a great time. It's been a great event so far, and I'm really excited to see these seri this series yeah. kick off between... Bales and Lucky. I'm super excited to see that too. Two players that I've talked to a lot online, or actually more so Lucky I've talked to for a very long time, uh -huh. only realizing maybe a couple months ago that he lived pretty close to where I was in Arizona before I moved to the local area, so yeah. it kind of sucks. But definitely, it's fun to see these players in a live event, especially Bales, who did win the first two at LPS. So these two players do have a lot of history. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I haven't seen Lucky too much at live events lately, but we're getting started here, so let's kick it off with game yep. number one. Moving into this PvP on Galactic Process. In the bottom right, or pardon me, bottom left hand corner, representing Flipside Tactics, it is the blue Protoss player, Bales. And here in the top right corner, we have from Team Ascension Pro, it is Lucky. And in the previous couple games we've seen with uh, True on Galactic Process, I know he's opened up a lot of attack paths, and I'm curious how that may factor into PvP with those attack paths into the third base and then the natural three separate ways to kind of get into your local area. Right, yeah, the big thing on this map is definitely that there are a lot of paths that are opened by rocks, so they're not immediately available, uh, you know, behind your natural and behind your third, but later on you'll see those come into play with a lot of counter tra counter attacks. Uh, things like warp prisms can be pretty effective because the bases are kind of spread out, uh, not so much early on, but later on for sure. Mm -hmm. And that'd be really exciting to see a lot of Warp Prism play. I know recently we've been seeing a little bit more of earlier in the series, or pardon me, earlier in the day, we've seen some different PvP with like uh, Adept Immortals happened a lot before, and the Blink Stalker Disruptor style obviously is coming to be fruition recently. See though, with a Warp Prism opening, I know for a little while we did have a Warp Prism opening that was an Adept draw, pretty quick stuff, yeah. that, was, that was more of a PvT style. Yeah, so far for both players, we've got uh, two gates going down and then the core. Uh, this will uh, allow the second gate and the core to finish at the same time, and we'll see. Usually uh, usually players start with double stalker. You occasionally see double adept, uh, which is kind of a more aggressive thing. It's a little bit risky because you, you're you usually trying to kill probes, and the stalkers will win in a straight-up fight, so most people will opt for two stalkers. Yeah, and right especially there. on a map like this, Galactic Process, where the players don't maybe know it as well, you want to go for those two stalkers, find a hidden base, or pardon me, a hidden proxy, something like that, because right. a little bit of a newer map, and knowing where the proxies are. But both players will open, as Pokemon is mentioning, with a safe opener, double stalker. Yep, we've got double stalker. Uh, Bales opts to start warp gate immediately, uh, while Lucky goes for the slightly faster Mothership Core. Uh, I don't think that's too meaningful at this stage in the game. Both of them uh, have their, their mains fully saturated. Uh, we'll probably just see them make a few units and then either choose uh, a tech path or an expansion. Uh, so far, neither of them have shown any signs of going for any sort of early tech. Yeah. And Lucky did get that early scout off, so at least he was paying attention to that, trying to play a little bit more of a reactionary game, but he's going to be very aggressive right off the bat, setting the Mothership Core and two stalkers across the map while Bales is looking like he wants to start getting a natural base going with that pylon, or possibly you could also see him push back the double stalker, Mothership Core of Lucky, and then play maybe a little bit of a different game while Lucky thinks there's a natural base. Right, yeah, Bales getting this pylon out here early enough uh, definitely shows that he's planning to take a natural. Uh, the one thing that's interesting about this map is even though there are those attack paths is that early on, this natural ramp is actually quite easily defended. It's only one relatively small ramp. Ooh. We also see uh, Bale sending his Mothership Core all the way around towards Lucky's base, uh, probably to try to get a scout off on the natural. Uh, we've also got a Mothership Core coming into uh, Bale's base for a scout. Almost got taken down, but it did manage to recall in time. Does, yeah, it does teleport home. Both players now opting to go for the sentries. As you just mentioned, it's very easy to defend on the space, the natural, with that simple ramp. Two force fields can shut that down. We are seeing our first signs of tech. Twilight Council from Bales, Robotics Facility from Lucky. But we could just see both of them throw down the ladder of those two and then go for a safer right. opener, Twilight Council, Robotics Facility. Yeah, definitely in Legacy of the Void, we see a lot of players, you know, this is true in PvT as well, uh, that you can go for both tech paths at once. Uh, and it's, it doesn't really slow you down too much to go for both the Robo and the Twilight, but neither of them have added the other one yet, so we will see a little bit of divergence here. Uh, and here comes the Twilight from Lucky. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, Bales is still hanging on to his Twilight Council. I'm curious if he will go for that Robotics Facility or scale into a larger attack. Blink is on the way awful quick, and how will Galactic Process kind of go and mesh together with a Blink play if we just see Heavy Stalker? 
Um, well, it looks to me like it would be a little difficult to do a, a blink attack without an observer. You could use the mothership core for the high ground vision and go up towards the third, uh, and then you've got you know some spots that you can go in the main as well. So you've definitely got some openings if you've got the high ground vision. But uh, with just the mothership core for high ground vision, that's definitely a little bit risky because that mothership core can get picked off uh, much more easily than an observer can usually. And at least for now, Bales is essentially taking your advice, going for that robotics facility, playing it as a safe opener. Still, both players are passive, and generally, at least in this certain period in the meta of PvP, you're seeing most games go to either one ba or either two base versus two base, and that would happen a little bit earlier on in the aggression, or, you know, we're just going to both go for a third base, and then the challenge is going to be who can snipe that first when those battles, those bouts yeah. start to happen when we're on a little bit higher tech paths. Yeah, we've got uh, Lucky starting to pump out some Immortals, while Bales has opted for a third gateway uh, to increase his Blink Stalker count. We've got a third gate coming down for Lucky now as well, so uh, we're definitely seeing very similar styles from the two players. Uh, the, you know, the order that they're building things may be slightly different, but uh, overall they've definitely got a very similar game plan, although we've got a third base coming down for Bales now. And I do really like the similar game plans, at least in this scenario, in the round of eight. We can really see how skillful these players are when they're doing the same thing, how their micro co compares and how their macro when the fights do start to happen with similar compositions. It's very interesting to see. However, Lucky is doing a slight deviation to overall what we're seeing, plus one attack is going to come yeah. down. That could be the difference between a lot of engagements. He's still not quite sending out a probe to go for his third. Bales just scouted that to see if there was a third right there with Lucinated Phoenix. And this could be a really big indicator of attack, especially if he can scout that forge. Uh, yeah, definitely. Bale's third, at this point, I mean, it's pretty significantly earlier to the point where Lucky will probably want to try to make something happen to avoid falling behind in a longer game. Uh, Lucky has taken both gases on his natural, while Bale's has only taken one. So uh, he's going to have a little more gas to make those tech units that will be valuable in an attack. Uh, he's also getting that Adept Resonating Glaives upgrade, which uh, could prove useful. If and at least, go for an attack. Yeah, and at least for now, it looks like Lucky may be going for that attack, but not that many gates are being added on. He has added on actually zero, only hanging around on one gate, and he will go for the far more aggressive third base, which will allow him to push out from the right-hand side and fall back onto that, essentially defending it with his aggression. Right, yeah, this is definitely an interesting third base choice. I've seen a couple players hmm. do this in different matchups, and I always uh, kind of want to ask them, like, what's your thought process behind taking this base? You did mention a good point, which is that you know, when you're aggressive, it's a little easier to fall back to. You're not quite spread out as much. Uh, Bales also hasn't scouted that third base, and he's scouted the other third location, which uh, actually means Bales may be not aware that Lucky is playing more for a macro game. He may think he is going for a big two-base attack, when in fact he's not really. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a really, really good point with kind of a, there is gates, two gates being added on, but not a lot, especially when you're on three gates, you, or pardon me, three nexuses. You want to be on a heavier gate cap, but for now, Bales does have that, was that, I believe that's Bales probe right there, hanging out, may be able to see the army, but for now, the army of Lucky, pushing up, taking down those rocks, and finding an opportunity to push into that third base. Finally, does Bales see it? Beautiful. He will identify that nexus, and now he knows what's up, but it could be a little bit deceiving with the attack right on his front doorstep. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think Bales has spotted this army at all yet, and uh, oh, he does see the rocks going down now, so he will be aware he's moving his army in position now. Oh. It's still a little bit out of position, so Lucky might be able to take a good engagement here, but it seems like his stalker count is definitely much lower. And those are some nice force fields coming out, so the, the army being out of position definitely is playing a factor here. Yeah, very nice force fields are actually keeping both armies back. A couple little pickoffs here and there of Immortals, but a very heavy stalker count. With, I mind you, with Blink, is going to be on the side of Bales. He decides to Blink back, using it more defensively, making sure he can keep those stalkers alive, because right now, there's not too much Lucky is managing to kill some situations in StarCraft. Maybe you have a Siege Tank shelling a Simulator, and he kind of forced the issue. But at the moment, right. it's just Lucky hanging outside the third base of Bales. Yeah, these force fields have been really good so far for Lucky, though. He's been able to trade really well, keeping alive those uh, Immortals and Sentries, which will allow him to keep doing this and mm. keep trading effectively with the Blink Stalkers. Oh, and nice night. pick off an Immortal as well. Yeah, that was a nice play. Looks like the third base is still going to survive for now. Even more force fields. Third base back at home for Lucky is solidified. And he's fighting, but I'm really worried once there so starts to be aggressive blinks. Because, yes, you have three Immortals, but that is a lot of Stalkers. And I'm curious why Bales is not quite doing that yeah. yet. But he is holding back. He's playing it very, very safe, which could be the reason. But there's a teleport home. One sentry, though, gets sadly leave behind, <laughs> left behind. He's going to fall back. Line of sight blockers may defend him. But what are your thoughts on Bales in that defensive? Normally, I do see him a little bit more of the aggressive player with right. his heavy stalker style. Yeah, uh, I felt like things went pretty well for Lucky there, a little better than expected. Lucky was has been able to tech to disruptors straight behind this, while Bales uh, 
Doesn't really have any increasing attack. He's throwing down a Dark Shrine now, but that's not really going to play a factor in the big engagements. Uh, so I feel like, uh, you know, if this if this goes into a pretty normal PP PvP where we just see a big clash, I feel like uh, Lucky's at an advantage at this point. He's got a slightly larger army as well as the Disruptor tech up faster with two Robos as well. Yeah, definitely. And you do have the Blink plays, which could force big Blinks out of Bales and not letting him to do the little individual Blinks of, during the fight to allow him to survive for longer. But at the same time that Bales was moving out, Lucky moves into his third base. He has a Warp Prism and is going on the Mineral Line. Yeah, he's only killed four probes so far, which isn't too big a deal. It looks like this Warp Prism actually may go down. If oh, barely. Oh, well, you're done. There's the kill. Yeah, a little sloppy control from both players there, actually, but uh, this Warp Prism does get cleaned up. It was only a few deaths, and he did kill... Oh, he's killing a couple more probes, it looks like. I'm not sure where those were killed, but a couple more probes did go down. So he killed seven probes with about four or five adepts. Uh, did lose the war prison though, which is a little unfortunate. And while all this was going down, we did see Lucky start to get his plus two upgrades. He's now at two to zero, and there isn't any upgrades on the way at all for Bales. And this could prove potentially disastrous in a one-on-one -on -one fight. I guess Lucky was lacking an army a little bit earlier, and as you said, to great force field engagements. Yeah. And that was because his money was invested into those upgrades. Yeah, the upgrades, uh, it'll be interesting to see how much of a factor they play. So with the disruptors... Oh, beautiful disruptor shot goes down. Stalkers do get out of there, but it does trigger a couple of the immortals. Yeah, some a really nice disruptor shot there from Lucky. Though so, uh, I'd be surprised if he caught Bales off guard like that again. You know, usually the first disruptor shot or two is the is the really scary part because that's when you're kind of revealing your your tech. And you know, at that point, Bales will be kind of playing around those disruptors a little more carefully in future engagements, probably. Man, this is crazy. Lucky expanding even closer to Bales. However, it's going to be a gold base this time at his fourth. Ooh. But DT's moving into the third. There's a cannon ready, though. Mm -hmm. There is a cannon in the natural, so... But one cannon can get taken out by these three DTs. They are moving towards the third now, where there's not a cannon, but the army will be closer by. Uh, looks like we're going to have an engagement happening here in the center. Ooh, uh, nice. Bales does lose a couple stalkers to a disruptor shot. Nice initial disruptor shot. The one thing I am worried about is there's disruptors on Bale's part, because uh, possibly Lucky has to pay attention to the DTs. Beautiful disruptor shot takes it out. Two DTs. Disruptor's going to fall back onto the photon cannon, allowing the photon cannon to do its damage. Another disruptor is wow. out, and both players are now in their fourth bases, yet neither has managed to snipe a third or anything, which is what we're kind of used to in PvP in this later stages of the game. Nice sell it run by here by Lucky with his uh, second war prism. They don't have charge, so it's a not perfectly ideal, but he is definitely doing some damage. He's moving his main army in towards the fourth, but at the same time, Bales has his army uh, looking to move towards Lucky's natural, so we could get in a little bit of an awkward scenario here where we'll see if one of these players chooses to go for a base trade or fall back. I think this is very smart by Bales. He knows he's down in upgrades. He's now starting to get his forge, but Lucky is up two to zero, which is going to be potentially disastrous in some of the larger engagements. Lucky is in the main, or pardon me, is at the third base of Bales, while Bales is in the main base of Lucky. In a situation where, yeah, does he even have the Mothership Core of the main army? Can he realistically teleport home? Yeah, I don't think there is a Mothership Core here with Lucky's army. Uh, so one thing Bales is doing, uh, I noticed he warped in a couple of DTs, and those will be big in, in this kind of situation. Uh, where, you know, observers may be a valuable resource. Uh, they are going to go for a full-on base trade, but Bales is getting to the production much more quickly. You see Lucky throwing down uh, a bunch of gateways here at his third base uh, as all the production falls in his main. So this will definitely be an interesting scenario, but Lucky has the much bigger army. So if it comes to a straight-up confrontation, uh, Lucky should win out here, but those DTs may prove uh, an interesting factor. Lucky actually throwing up a Dark Shrine of his own. Not sure how many observers we have on the map for Lucky. Uh, looks like there's only one with his army. Yeah, currently both armies yeah, have one. one out on the field. You have one observer with each. And right now I'm really starting to enjoy how the Lucky started to expand closer to Bales because the yeah. more Bales kills the bases, he actually gets closer to Lucky in the space trade situation. Now that may have been a little bit inadvertently done, but yeah. I do love that style, especially with Lucky being right up in the face of Bales. But also on the other hand, I think Bales did have to go for this attack because of those upgrades difference and because of yeah. the larger army, as you right. mentioned earlier, Pope Bunny. Yeah, the army supply difference was pretty significant along with the upgrades, so uh, he was definitely in a rough spot if it came to a straight-up engagement. Oh, DT Shrine went down right yeah, there. Yeah, I'm not sure if... Uh, looks like Lucky didn't get any DTs out. I'm not... Uh, yeah, no DTs here out for Lucky, but the buildings are falling. Oh, we've got... We do have a few DTs that did warp in for Lucky, so he has those available. There is only one Observer, uh, as I previously mentioned. Uh, Bale's actually 
He's pretty low on buildings here, though. Yeah, he is. He's got the one Nexus in the north position and a Simulator in something else in the bottom. Looks like these a lot, a lot of Archons are being warped in, but all the gates at that third base are very vital to Lucky's economy. He needs to keep those up if he wants to make this work. It looks like the main army of Lucky is falling back to join him. These Archons, Observer of Bales is hanging out right there. There is that only one Observer out of the map that could possibly be sniped, but the DT Shrine, as we were talking about earlier, was taken out, and that still could have a big factor, but both players have managed to snipe the majority of the tech, and now it's coming down to the wire, where, again, as you mentioned, Lucky has a severe advantage in the army and upgrade lead. Yeah, it definitely looks like uh, Lucky's in a much better position here. Uh, Bale's taking a nice position on this low ground, preventing Lucky from mining and making any more units. Uh, the disruptors can't really be as effective in this position, because the shots obviously can't travel down the cliff. It's amazing. Uh... I love that style, exactly as you're saying, in the position where he is right there, because of course the disruptors can't do that. He finally takes down the gates. Lucky does not have the production at the third base. He does have his main base, semi, I guess the new main base in the bottom right hand corner he's going to be using. But Bales is desperately trying to unsupply block himself. He's at 89 out of 15. But Lucky here, he still can produce. He may not have a good income, or he may not have an income apart hardly at all. But he does have pylons out. He did manage to keep making those as this game was going, and has been far better prepared for a base trade situation like this than he, we saw Bales. Yeah, he's got a, actually three nexuses now at different places on the map and enough uh, Ooh, pylons. Nice force fields. Yeah, almost picked off a couple units there. Might actually have gotten the mother... Yeah, oh, he blinked... Wait, oh, the phoenixes uh, managed to pick off the mothership core. But Lucky has three nexuses and enough supply that he can immediately start making units with all his money. You see that Bales did start mining in the top... Uh, but he's had to make a bunch of pylons, so he hasn't actually been able to make any units yet. Mm -hmm. That's been hurt him. He is at 89 out of 47, so he still needs a number of pylons to do anything. But at this point, I'm wondering if we would see Lucky move to low ground. Oh, there he spots the next in the top left, and he does the uh, potential to warp stuff, some stuff in. He does have a few gates. He lo did lose that DT shrine, so it's not going to come into play, but his elf will start to work at that nexus. Yeah, it looks like it's actually just one gateway there uh, that's currently online for Lucky, uh, or perhaps... Maybe more than one, but only choosing into warp in one zealot at this time. Uh, Phoenix coming to chase down that warp from them. Only one. Oh, looks Double like we are actually having final. a bit of an engagement. Uh, seems like not neither player lost too many, and its army supply still seems firmly in favor of Lucky. Yeah, it does 121 to 83, and right now he's going to fall back straight up into his main, and I really think the position right here, what he's worried about is if these Blink Stalkers blink up into the main, but there's not that much other than the Blink Stalkers. If he chose to take a flight on the low ground, the Immortals would not be able to get up there, the Adepts would be able to get up there, and beautiful force fields come out, sectioning off one of the Immortals. Archons have to be very careful, low health at the front, but simply Lucky outnumbers Bales 2-1 to one in this situation, 113 army supply to the 60 of Bales, but Bales will not give up, he's going to try to just poke, 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 as long as he can into Lucky, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. In the end, Lucky is going to play this safe on the high ground. There's the blink down. There's the snap of the Immortal. And I don't think there's that much left to really do anything against Lucky. Yeah, Lucky's uh, stalker count is quite low, which is making it difficult for him to play aggressively. But it looks like uh, the army of Bales is just not going to hold up, even on the low ground. GG! Lucky takes game one. Wow. Really impressive play there by Lucky. Uh, he really honestly just was always in a comfortable position. Uh, in the macro game, you know, he had had the upgrade lead, he had a few more units. Uh, when he made that attack on the third, he played really cautiously, took a good engagement, and then just backed off. Uh, and then in the base trade scenario, it looked like he was in a pretty good spot the whole way through. There never was really a time where we were like, oh, you know, Lucky might be in a really bad spot here. You know, it, it, it was a little... Things were a little weird, uh, as base trades always are. But uh, yeah. But what I loved is, as we were talking about, with expanding towards his opponent, it com yeah. almost helped him in that way. I really do wonder if he was planning to do uh, a base trade situation in that manner. And I'm also curious, with the plus two he got really early on, it seemed like it was almost, even if there wasn't a base trade, even from the beginning, Lucky could have taken a lot of engagement versus Bales, and it just kind of sacrificed early economy, or pardon me, his early army in the engagements and used the force fields, as you talked about, yeah. at the third base of Bales to survive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that game definitely seemed very well done by Lucky, uh, and I think most people would have considered Bells the favorite in this match, so considering that that game you know, was probably relatively standard, we did have the mess of the base trade at the end, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's probably a situation that both these players have been in several times before, but Lucky uh, you know, seemed pretty calm and collected, pretty confident all the way through. Uh, and took it pretty convincingly. And as an experienced player as you are, uh, Terran may not be Protoss, but he can still speak a bit to those mentalities of these two right. players. How does Bales come out of that, as you mentioned, as being kind of favored in the beginning? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what his thoughts were coming into this match about his opponent and whether he was the better player, but I would have to guess he felt confident that in macro games he would have an edge. But, you know, you might not quite have that confidence. Maybe he doesn't really know too much about Lucky and he wasn't sure how much you know, how much of a favorite he really was, and now he might be wondering, you know, do I have to mix it up? Should I go for the same kind of game? And, you know, I'm not sure how he feels about that game or how he felt about the match beforehand, but he could be losing a little bit of confidence here. Well, we'll see what he does do in the bottom right-hand corner, representing Flipside Tactics. It is the blue Protoss player, Bales. And up in the top left-hand corner of Frost, we have, as the green Protoss player from Team Ascension, Lucky with oh, a 1-0 yeah. lead. Nice in this best of three series. We're on the round of eight. Currently, these players have made money getting in the round of eight, but they really want to make it to that round of four, the semifinals, yeah. to start making the money and uh, really being able to pay, yes. pay off. Yeah, in terms of payout, it's definitely a big jump if you make the semifinals. So this is a really important match for both players. Uh, you know, even though the winner of this match will definitely face a tough opponent in true, uh, this match is very important on its own either way. Mm -hmm. And as we were talking about a little bit earlier, Bale's feeling more comfortable in macro. We are starting to look at the map. This is Frost, a four-player map, really big one. Yeah. I feel like this should, in theory, favor him if we see Lucky with the same aggressive style as he's played in this and a lot of other games that we've seen over the past two days. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it is a very big map, as you mentioned, and we've also got cross spawns, which means two things. First of all, early attacks will be a little more difficult, obviously, due to the distance, but in the later game, it actually kind of has the opposite effect because you're going to have to start expanding towards your opponent. Uh, if you look at the map, you know, if you've got horizontal or vertical positions, you can kind of expand away from your opponent as the game goes longer. But on, on Frost, you'll be forced to engage your opponent in order to continue taking expansion. So it will, there will definitely be a lot of opportunity for uh, big engagements, harass plays. Uh, we could see all sorts of stuff in this third game or second game on Frost. Now, how we're seeing both players start to wind up. Both are opening like they did before, neither going for the adepts. You wouldn't really do it on Frost. You'd have yeah. a better chance of doing it on Galactic mm. Process, the last map. But here we have a proxy pylon in the bottom left, and it's a very nice position to be a Stargate. Stargate. How's that going to go up, up against Bale's opener in this situation? Uh, well, Bale's hasn't taken the expansion quite yet, but he does look like he's gearing up to do so just like game one. Uh, if he does so, it'll be an interesting scenario. I'm not sure what uh, Lucky plans to make out of the Stargate. He probably plans to start off with an Oracle, but you know, from that point, we could even see uh, some sort of all-in with Void Rays, just an Oracle or two into a macro game. Uh, he actually has thrown down the Nexus himself around the same time as Bale. So this Stargate uh, isn't going to be too much of an all-in play. He's just going to try to get some damage done, probably in transition into more of a macro game. Even though it may not be an all-in, I love that you mentioned the Void Ray attacks because I feel like Lucky would be a player perfectly suited for that with his aggressive yeah. nature that we've been seeing in PvP. For now, he opens up with an Oracle, and it's going to be going head-to-head -head against two Stalkers, two Sentries, the same opening we saw last game for both players on Galactic Process. Yeah, uh, this Oracle, it does look like Bales has his units positioned well to deal with this. He, may not, he might not be expecting it, but you know, there's always the possibility of that proxy Stargate in PvP. He certainly can't search the entirety of Frost for it. Uh, so he probably won't take too much damage, but you know, when you're doing this kind of opening, every probe really counts because their expansions went down at the same time. So every probe that Lucky gets is a probe Especially that he's ahead. Matchup. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And now we do have Stalkers at the main base ready. Mothership Core also ready for a Photon Overcharge. Oracle's angling in. You also have some Stalkers down there naturally. Really, overall, Bales is completely prepared for anything that's going to happen. Yeah, Oracle coming in. Oh, he might not be paying perfect attention to it. It could go down. Ooh, it does goes go down. down quick. Double Photon Overcharge deals with it. However, it does manage to spot that Twilight Council. I believe it does, at least. Let me check that out. He does manage to spot the Twilight Council on the right-hand side, which is pretty important to see where yeah. Bales is aiming for in this mid-game. What do you think he will do? Uh, it looks like Bales is pretty much playing the same sort of style he did uh, last time. He'll probably go up to three gates with a Blink and a Robo and look to grab a third, make a couple of Immortals, play pretty defensively. Uh, we may see him go for a little bit of a greedier third this time, potentially, since it's Frost and he did get rid of that first Oracle so quickly. Uh, you know, he's probably feeling pretty confident that he'd be able to hold a slightly earlier third, but he does have a third gateway coming down, so not quite yet going for that third base. Probably if Bales did opt to go for that quick third, it would be much more safer anyways because he did that last game too so it could be a much more safer overall as you mentioned and i think he does do that pretty often but for now we have the natural base held by both players and looks like that oracle's still gonna blink and try to get some damage down to get out blink is on the way for bales as he opted to go that way immortals now being pumped out for lucky and he is looking like he's gonna gear up for an attack eventually 
Yeah, he's got that forge going pretty early once again. Uh, looks like he hasn't actually started an upgrade on it. And there it is now, just plus one attack coming out. Uh, but he doesn't have a twilight, so he's not going to have that blink available to him uh, nearly as early as Bells. Bells just throw down his third base, and he's going to have the blink available to him much earlier. So those are definitely the edges he has in this game. Well, of course, Lucky has the Stargate tech up a couple probes as a result of that Stargate tech, even though he only picked off uh, maybe three probes or so uh, with otherwise mirror builds. Yeah. Every probe, you know, is a probe that you've got ahead on your opponent. So being in a game two of a best of three, it does really make me curious about that plus one attack we're seeing once again about out of Lucky. I'm sure Bales knew about it last game. He should have clicked on it and said, okay, you have the plus two advantage, <laughs> which is pretty astronomical in a lot of PvP matchups. Once you get into the mid to late game, it's already paid off. It's not like right. that money's in the bank and you're waiting for it to pay off. It will pay off. Yeah. Plus one will be done pretty by the early. time Bales attacks. That's an interesting decision by him. How does he kind of wiggle around that? Is that with sentries? Is that with blink? Uh, well, later on, the big players in the fights are usually the disruptors, so that can uh, hold that thought for one moment. We've got Bales moving in, and he's got the blink here, and there are, I think uh, Lucky just expended all his force fields at, on that first wave. Uh, Bales doesn't have any way to warp in reinforcements here, though, so this attack isn't going to be too committed. Uh, he may try a little bit more to pick off the units, some units with his mobility advantage, but otherwise, uh, this will just be a small pressure uh, as both of them transition to third base in a macro game. Yeah, and if you want to, Bales can easily blink left or right, but he's going to opt to blink backwards onto that third nexus that he has. Lucky also has the nexus. As I mentioned earlier in the previous game, a lot of PvP is coming down to sniping that third base or looking at the fourth, trying to deny that next step in economy for both players. Uh, Bales is getting that resonating glaze upgrade and he's got a warp prism now coming out on the map. Uh, that could have the potential to do a lot of damage and really swing the game in his favor. Uh, he's probably got a slight edge at this point. His third was up a little bit earlier and he's actually uh, taken the lead in terms of probe count even though it's not too big of a lead. Uh, so he's in a pretty comfortable position here going into a macro game and he's also thrown down a dark shrine once again. Ooh, I like that combined with the warp prism and I especially like the warp prism because of how lucky he has expanded down to the bottom left Ooh, and this aggression at the same time. Looks like Stalker's gonna move in to try to snipe a century or two, blinks back, but with that warp prism moving in Lucky is going to be all the way down the bottom left. He's not going to be at the other third base yeah. where he could easily blink up into the main. So right. easily, Bales can force Lucky to have to worry about two places or simply out multitask in a situation where he has to worry about warping in at his main base, getting an observer there when the DTs hit, and defending a third base at the okay, same time. wow. It actually looks like he's using the warp prism to warp in reinforcements for his army. He has a lot of adepts and he's moving in with them, but he chooses not to commit. Uh, these adepts could be very dangerous along with the blink stalkers. Uh, but he hasn't yet committed. Lucky actually is finishing up a lot of gateways right now. He had six on the production tab a minute ago and now, so three of them have completed. So he's gonna have a lot of gateways available to him. Uh, so he should be able to pump out enough army to hold on here, uh, even though he's slightly down in army supply. Oh, well, Lucky repositioning on the left-hand side. I love this threatening manner by Bales, a shading forward, gaining ground, getting behind Lucky and putting him in a lot of little bad positions. Adepts looking like they may shade complete. I'm not sure if they will do it, but it looks like they do. Nope, they cancel right in the end. Photon overcharge goes down. This is a nice force by Lucky, but in a lot of PvPs, we've seen him have a very fragile army. It has a lot of potential, but incredibly fragile. Yeah, War absolutely. Prism heads up into the main, drops some DTs, and now Bales is or pardon me, Lucky, about oh multiple boy. things. Yeah, this is definitely going to be really difficult for Lucky to deal with here. He, his army can't even really effectively maneuver into his main without oh. risking a confrontation. And we do have uh, Bales shading forward once again as the DTs continue to take down probes. We've got 11 down already, and the DTs have not even come close to being dealt with. Uh, Bale's definitely taking a commanding edge here with this DT play and his smart army positioning. And really right now, Lucky needs to be focused completely on his army, not on those DTs, because like I said, it's a very squishy army, lots of sentry, lots of force fields, and blink. Adepts are right there, though. The adepts focus straight down on I the main army I don't know about Lucky, this. Though. Bales does commit with these adepts, but these force fields have cut off the rest of the army, and Bales loses a lot of adepts. That was a crazy one-sided fight for Lucky. His reinforcing adepts uh, did a really good job of taking down all those warpins. Uh, when Bales initially shaded forward, Lucky didn't have too many adepts, but then he had like eight come in for reinforcements, and that really helps to take down uh, Bales' adepts that were all a little bit out of position. Oh, we definitely. still have the DTs at play here, but... DTs still, still are at play, but I'm amazed by Lucky. He's lost 15, 16, 17-ish workers, but he still is kind of in the game, but he's got to be super careful not to let those DTs just go to town. He's actually moving out while those DTs were doing the damage, and I guess he thinks he's in a much worse position than he kind of was. DTs are finally cleaned up at the natural, and at the same time, oh. Lucky is moving out. Oh, his snipes, was that observer? A war prism? A war, a war prism for Lucky going down, which is really big because that will not allow him to reinforce this attack, which I think he's planning to commit pretty hard to. Uh, so I'm not really sure how he plans to attack here. Now he's down way more workers than he was initially. 
Uh, it, you're right, if he had backed off, secured himself against those DTs, he wouldn't have been in a bad position because he had a pretty significant army supply lead, but now his army supply lead has shrunk a bit, and it doesn't really look like he's going to be able to get a lot done with this uh, army here at the front. Lucky is posturing into this third base, plus two just finished up, and those adepts are going to be very, very heavy on the damage. Nice force fields yeah. do put a lot of adepts back. Since Bales has transitioned from stalkers to adepts, he doesn't have quite the same reach he had before in blinking forward, but now he's going to see if he can resonate in glade on top of the army. Not as many sentries this time, and I guess Bales doesn't need, or pardon me, Lucky doesn't need to be worrying about what's happening at home since he took the damage from DTs and could just focus on the micro. Yeah, things are definitely getting really... I mean, Lucky's on the clock here, for sure. I mean, he's down... He was down more than 20 probes. The gap is lowered to 15 now, but Bales is also taking a fourth base, which will come into play pretty soon, as their mains are pretty close to mined out at this point. Oh, uh, here's Lucky looking like he needs to move in. Bales pu pulls back. Force that's coming out from both sides. Lucky pulls back. Nice little blink forward. Does trigger an immortal. At the same time, by the way, Bales is taking his fourth base, so if he holds, in theory, he should be able to out-macro Lucky for a while. Yeah, Lucky warping in a lot more adepts here, though. It looks like he's really going to try hard to make something happen. He does move in, and he's got those shades. We'll see if he moves forward. He does also have the upgrade advantage, and here come the adepts. Uh, some nice force fields by Bales, along with the photon overcharges. Immortal still hacking away on both sides. More adepts coming in for Bales. It looks like they've traded roughly evenly so far. Uh, supply favors Bales just a bit, but it's dropping fast, and that... Plus two upgrade is certainly making a difference here. Plus one only a few seconds away right now for Bale, so he will even it up just a little bit on this hold. He is really, really trying to keep this alive. Probes are being pulled from the north position right there at that third nexus. They're going to surround the Immortals. Immortals will focus them down, not focusing down the Stalkers or other Immortals, which is what they want to be doing. And this is all Lucky has right now. He's at 41 probes, so it's pretty Ooh. even actually 41 to 49 after killing a lot of those workers, but he's got to be really careful. He lost a lot of economy. He hasn't necessarily been rebuilding it back at home. And Bale this entire time has been producing four workers Ooh. at a time. GG, well played! Bale! evens it up one to one that end there I think you did it I think you said it best just as a little bit um, of a risky move not to fall back and defend yeah uh, I think lucky thought he was in a much worse position than he was as you mentioned after those initial DTs he did lose I think about t 10 or 12 probes but he rebuilt them pretty quickly he had his three bases relatively saturated uh, he actually had a lot of probes at his nat and hadn't transferred them back to his main right away but uh, his probe count was, I don't think, quite as bad as he thought it was, and so he felt a little bit more pressure to, to go on the offensive immediately. Uh, and it did almost work out. That plus two on those adepts definitely seemed like it was doing a lot of work, uh, but it just wasn't quite enough for Bale's slightly superior production. Yeah, and I felt like that plus two is really what made the difference in one of the first attacks Bales did, moving into the almost the second base, or the natural yeah. base, kind of that area yeah. around that where you can take the third. He moves in. You, you even said it. Wow, he does not seem to be taking a great engagement. He has to pull back. Lots of force fields came down. There's so many adepts that with the reinforcing adepts came in from um, Lucky to hold that base, and that held him, but the Warp Prism in the end got him, being yeah. pulled apart just too much. Yeah, and the fight that you're talking about, there were two really big factors there that I mm. noticed. One was the force fields really isolated the adepts from the rest of the army, and that uh, just made a huge difference. And the other was that Lucky had uh, about eight or so reinforcing adepts come behind uh, his army to deal with his opponent's adepts, which is a really big deal because uh, Bale's adepts, I think, were pretty much hitting stalkers and immortals, which they won't kill very quickly. And with the adepts behind the stalkers and immortals, they can really do a lot of damage. Uh, Bale's lost an entire warp in round of adepts before they did almost anything. And so uh, he almost was in a really tough spot, but those DTs managed to pull it back for him and give him a commanding lead again. Yeah, a lot of little things come into play in these PvPs in mirror matchups with the hierarchy of units, how they're kind of structured, how they're positioned in the main army. But here we are for game three of this best of three on Frozen Temple. In the top left-hand position, representing Flipside Tactics, it is the blue Protoss player, the one, the only, Bales, able to even it up one-to-one -one last game. And dropping that last game, but still definitely not out of it yet, in the bottom right-hand corner, as the red Protoss, we have Team Ascension's Lucky. At least on Frozen Temple, if Lucky opts to do what he did last game, kind of making the, uh, I think I've lost too much, I need to go all in, he does have the possibility on a much smaller map to get there quicker and subdue Bales. Yeah, definitely. I think a big thing that made that a problem last game as well was losing that Warp Prism pretty much for no reason at all. He had a Warp Prism fly straight into Bale's army, and that made it much harder for him to reinforce. Uh, we've got both players opening up with that double gas, double gate, once again it looks like. Uh, so pretty standard opening so far from both players. 
Uh, probe Scout coming out for Bales a little bit earlier than Lucky, but both of them are sending out that Probe Scout. Yeah. Sure that a little bit earlier of a probe could be attributed to, of course, him aiming up last game. He's been on the edge of defeat throughout this tournament, or at least throughout this best of three series, losing game one. Yeah. And right now, of course, Lucky will be feeling maybe not quite as confident as he did last game, but he's still trying to get back into this. And one to one, a lot of things can happen on Frozen Temple. A much smaller map definitely will, I think, favor Lucky in his style. Yeah, it definitely could. And while it's, it is true that this map is definitely smaller, I think most players feel pretty comfortable playing relatively standard games on this map. Uh, Lucky is definitely the kind of player that will throw out almost anything in a tournament series. Uh, his macro game is, is pretty solid, but he's, he's, he plays quite unpredictably, which when you are a solid macro player, uh, does improve your macro game as well, because your opponent uh, can't be relying on you to play a macro game, you know, there's always the potential for you to mix things up, and this probe does look but maybe positioned for a pylon, maybe just in a, a late a delayed scout. Yeah, now, by the way, I think you bring up a phenomenal point. Sometimes I hear people playing, uh, complaining about, oh, what if my opponent does this or this? But you cannot, in a lot of these games, in these situations, be letting your opponent dictate what you do. Or pardon me, not necessarily that, but you can't, um, you can't hope they do this. You, right. can't really, you can't rely on that. You have to be able to be countering them. And in this situation, Bales is kind of opting to do that. Opening up with yeah. early adept, it's a smaller map. He's not going to let his opponent um, show what he does. Yeah, definitely is a good... Uh, point that you bring up about, you know, one player kind of dictating the, the pace of the match. Uh, Bale's kind of trying to take that driver's seat here with the Adepts, but it doesn't look like he's going to get much done here, not even really any scouting. Uh, Nexus does go down for both players at roughly the same time. Twilight Council coming down immediately for Bales along with those sentries, so it looks like he's once again opting for the same sort of style he did before, just with the early adepts for a little more scouting and pressure this time. Mm -hmm. And with what we were talking about, I think Lucky is completely fine. He wasn't necessarily hoping his opponent didn't do anything, opening very safe with lots of stalkers. Adepts are going to shade by the stalkers. Stalkers have them on full reach read, and they're going to go to the flip opposite side of the map. Both players, though, are at least look for now. Bales knows about the natural base of Lucky. Lucky doesn't know about it quite yet, but with these early adepts, whether he gets damage done or not, he can get a lot of scouting done and be able to play this final game, possibly a game changer in this tournament for him with far more information than the uh, previous games. Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely a big game for both players, as you mentioned. We've got the Robo coming down first, followed by the Twilight uh, for Lucky. Bales has already started that blink. He's had the, the blink earlier in every game this series, uh, and he did make somewhat good use of it in some of the games. Uh, you know, in game one, though, I feel, felt like it did. there was a little bit to be desired, so I feel like I'd like to see him try to make a little bit more happen with his earlier blink this game. Definitely one thing with that also is often you will have players having to deal with drops in the back of their base, but that wasn't even happening. Yet on the flip side, Bales was attempting to do that, was attempting to pull Lucky apart, make him have to commit make him have to commit APM multitasking to right. some area. Yeah, we've actually got a about a three to four probe lead here for Lucky, uh, which is pretty surprising given that they've pretty much gone for mirror builds and you know that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're doing the exact same thing, you know, that that's one of those things that can give you a slight edge, you know. We saw in game one a sort of similar thing where they were pretty much doing the same thing, but Lucky had the, the one forge with the upgrades going, uh, it took a couple good engagements early on that just gave him a slight edge that allowed him, that gave him a commanding lead in the base trade. So, you know, every little advantage really matters in these kinds of PvPs where both players are pretty much playing a similar sort of style. Definitely in those similar styles. For now, we have Hallucinated uh, Phoenix, which gets into the main base of Bale. Scouts, what's what? Both players are pumping Immortals, and they have Blink on the way. Plus one, once again, coming down for Lucky. We've seen this this happen to him in PvPs. I think even yesterday, we had him play a couple PvPs in this style. Uh, very heavy sentry style he has liked, but he has switched that up against Bales. Can't remember who exactly he was playing against, but he did opt for that heavy sentry style with kind of working off spellcasters early on, and that has allowed him for that plus one to kick in eventually and really make a difference in the larger engagements. But for now, Bales is moving forward, and finally, as you're kind of talking about, he is going to start using that Blink a little bit more, but Blink is not quite done for this engagement, and mm, Lucky gets right on top of him. Oh, Blink, just finish it up. Yeah, it is done for uh, Bales, but not quite done for Lucky. Coming very close to finishing up for Lucky, so he does have to be careful uh, if he, you know, relies on his Blink to retreat and then gets chased with a Blink, things can get a little dangerous. Gonna pick off that Observer and blink away. Nice play there by Bales. Uh, we do have a proxy pylon here on the, si the left side for Lucky. Uh, not quite sure yet what he's going to use that for, but he does throw it on a third base, so it doesn't look like he's planning to use that for any serious two-brace aggression. Just maybe a couple harassed weapons later on. 
Yeah, not too many gates. Lucky is throwing down, but he also is throwing down three gates, so he has that opportunity for him. Resonating Glaives is on the way, so a similar style as what we've seen in the last game, which almost worked, but because it was a larger four-player map, didn't quite get to Bale's base as quickly as he would have liked it to. I think that should change the outcome possibly of this game if we see the same scenario play out again. Yeah, last game was definitely a little different with the Stargate coming into play early on, but uh, here we've got Bales throwing down several more gateways. Lucky, once again, uh, seems like he's taken an upgrade lead here. Uh, Lucky has... Both of them are pretty much just sitting on their ramps here, uh, establishing that third base. Uh, I mean, Bales throws down the robotics bay, so he's going to be going straight towards those disruptors a little bit earlier than Lucky, uh, and it'll be interesting to see if Lucky follows with those disruptors, as we would probably expect, or tries to mix it up with some sort of alternative army composition. You know, what we were talking about with those adepts, I think it could be interesting with disruptors, because yes, Lucky has a couple Blink Stalkers, but not a m large army of that. Bills really has narrowed down his army and his strategy to a fine point with lots of Blink Stalkers. He's able to counter if his opponent goes disruptors, anything like that, get out of any hairy situations. So it could prove potentially disastrous for Lucky if he moves out and has a very heavy adept composition and doesn't quite get the shades off in time. Disruptors hit. Robotics yeah. Bay is part of me. Yeah, the Robotics Bay just about to finish up. Bale scouts, sees the main army comp and says, yes! Now I can go Disruptor. Perfect. Yeah. And this time he's actually got upgrades on the way instead of last time where right. it was 2-0. Yeah, it's only, he's only slightly down in upgrades. Uh, his plus 2 uh, is just starting uh, as L Lucky's is nearing completion. Uh, probably about half the progress. Probably will be about halfway done when Lucky's finishes. Uh, we do have a Warp Prism out uh, for Lucky. I'm not sure where that ended up. We've also got some pylons spread around the map. Uh, so it does look like he's positioning himself well to uh, kind of uh, s throw some, you know, adept DT run buys in uh, as they move into a macro game, which could definitely be a big deal. It definitely looks like he's got kind of the map control. You know, if you were to look at each player's individual vision, it feels like Lucky uh, really has an edge in terms of just having a general feel for where things are on the map. You know, he's got the opportunity to warp things in on the left, on the top, while Bales really is just confined to his three bases. Mm -hmm. And now we have even more scouts coming out from Lucky. He's got that warp prism ready. I'm really curious to see how he's going to do that. And he will decide to mirror Bales in the Disruptor game, kind of getting into this later stages of the game at the nine minute mark, waiting. And now he starts to move out on the right hand side. At the same time, he secures his fourth Nexus. Bales spots that in May, kind of me thinking, oh, I want to take a fourth Nexus of my own, something like that to go one for one. But Lucky is looking to snipe that up in the top right. At the same time, the warp prism is ready to move into the third or natural, possibly, to pull Bales apart in this final game of this best of three. Ladies and gentlemen is one to one the winner of this moves on to the semi-finals of cheese adelphia summer 2016 and as you mentioned poke bunny has a huge chance of making a lot more money yeah uh bale's army supply notably is almost 20 higher right now so it'll be difficult for lucky to get much done with his army and it does look like he wisely turns back uh, not trying to take a direct engagement quite yet also with disruptors coming out much later for him uh it'll be interesting to see how he's going to handle the big engagement that will most likely uh, inevitably occur at some point in this game. Yeah, and it was really interesting. Lucky went up to the top right, and then he's floating about a thousand minerals, and I thought it was about to warp in a lot, but he right. did decide to fall back, and that is where we're seeing that discrepancy start to happen. And he's got to be very careful not to let that start to s snowball a little bit like it is, but at least he is decided to take the macro game, and he had put himself in a very threatening posture, much like we've seen Bales in game two. But with that, cancel Bales fourth, and now he's at four bases to Bales three. Not only that, but he has the upgrade lead, which will, in a longer macro, game start to snowball well for Lucky at this one-to-one -one point in the game in this match series. Yeah, he's got his plus three attack finishing up here while Bales actually has not opted to start the plus three, just sitting on plus two. Neither of them with armor upgrades either. Uh, Lucky's got a couple disruptors out, but Bales definitely has got the uh, advantage here on the disruptor count. Uh, Bales moving towards the fourth base with uh, about five disruptors it looks like and a pretty solid army but we've got some uh, harass going on in Bale's natural and even possibly his main some DTs and zealots in the natural uh, oh just a couple of hallucinated phoenixes in the main but Bale's army is moving in towards Lucky's fourth and this will be a really difficult engagement for Lucky to take he does, does just choose to drop the fourth and fall back to his third uh, as he is doing some damage with this harass at the same time, Bales does secure his own fourth, and now we can see trading out of disruptors. Lucky sent his out a little bit earlier, and what did manage to snipe Bales 
But right now, Lucky's to be super careful, as you mentioned. Lucky, or pardon me, Bales is a severe army supply oh! leader. Looks like it's going to be great. He takes out two disruptors and takes out an adept. It's a great pickup, but he's got to be really careful. A lot of his army does not have blink. Yes, he's got those stalkers, but he has the immortals and the sentries, which for a long time will not be good at getting away from those disruptors. But I love the time warp that just went down there. If a disruptor would have gone off, the immortals would have been so slowed down. The disruptors yeah. allowed to do the damage, but Bales surgically moves in, takes out that base, and still has about a 25 army supply lead. Yeah, uh, taking out those two disruptors was definitely really huge for Lucky as he was down both in gateway units and disruptor count and that just makes it really hard to take an engagement because uh, you know you're both going to be getting some disruptor shots with such large army sizes but if your opponent has both more disruptors and more gateway units you know you can't rely on just dodging the disruptor shots and overwhelming with pure gateway you can't rely on using your disruptor advantage to kind of play defensively and pick away at that army size so picking off those couple disruptors and kind of evening the score is definitely really big for Lucky here. I'm kind of fascinated by what Lucky was doing. He has been floating the minerals for a long time, but he did just finish up her as a fleet beacon on the way, looking to possibly go into those Tempests. Great revelation. Will allow Lucky to get some preemptive disruptor strikes if he wants to, maybe even pick up a stalker. And oh, the disruptors be really careful not to move command into the main oh. army, but for a second, Bales is scaring. Blinks forward, though, it takes it out. Disruptor's now moving out. It's going to be a long game of posturing, threatening. Wow, it looks like Lucky is trying to save up to those Tempests, possibly to get those. But still, he sacrificed his fourth base and is floating a very high amount of minerals. It's a kind of unique way of playing it out. Yeah, DTs and Zealots do once again warp into the natural, get a little bit done, do kill five probes and force a, a retreat of the rest of the probes. A Photon Overcharge actually not quite managing to take out that warp prism, which will live to see another day for now. Still just sitting in the natural, a cannon going down for Bales uh, to deal with those DT warpins. Bales moving forward, he's still got a pretty significant army supply lead, but, so if it does come down to a big engagement, as long as Bales doesn't uh, miss micro too much, he oh, should nice have an revelation. advantage. Nice revelation and nice disruptor yeah. shot. Currently it is 150 army supply to the 117 of Lucky. Lucky is to pull back these disruptors, and for now, Bales is posturing into the space. He does not want whatever the next step in Lucky's tech path is to come out yet, which is going to be Tempest yeah, in a few seconds. Bales is starting to get a nice concave. Still pulling back, though, and it looks like it's not going to hit, but a lot of his disruptors are super clumped up right close together. He has a very mobile army, but a couple hits could mean the difference between life and death in this tournament. Yeah, a big thing to note here that is that Bales does have a pretty significant army supply lead, and that's mostly because his probe count is so low. If you take a look at the probe counts, uh, Bales is actually down 22 probes. Which is oh, the disruptor oh, shot! Takes gosh. out a number of disruptors right there, and that's the signature right there for Bales. They're moving oh, another oh, huge oh. disruptor shot! Lucky was not paying attention to his main army, and that is exactly what wow. Bales needed. Bales is moving in. Lucky may have a little bit of an, uh, of an upgrade lead, but it's not going to quite be enough right now. Tempests are starting to do their damage, but Bales knows this is the calling card. I have to move in right now. Yeah, this Tempest will slowly pick away at this army, but will it be enough? The fourth is going to fall once again. He's retaking the lower location, but without those disruptors, he's going to have a really difficult time taking a full-on engage, so he's going to have to rely on the Tempest picking away a lot in order to actually... Uh, be able to hold on here. Once again, Lucky's fourth base is destroyed before it's in the bottom left, and then he moved it into that place, which he just lost, and now he's got to throw it down into the bottom left. Once again, he does have the Tempest transition. However, those worker supply leads still is in the favor of Lucky, so maybe he can do something with that to boot with the Tempest transition. Right. But again, the disruptor shots completely reset the disruptors, and now he's only got four or five. Right. Uh, the higher worker count for Lucky does give him a lot more freedom to, to lose those units and replace them. But at the same time, Bales is sitting on a 2,000 mineral bank. He doesn't have too much gas, but a uh, rematch with Adepts after uh, you know a bunch of those units are traded off could prove to be very dangerous, as Lucky will probably not have that same capability. Some Adepts running in the fourth for uh, Bales, not doing too much damage here. Got one Tempest in a little bit of a precarious position. Big Disruptor Ooh. shot, but it's not going to go off. The Disruptor was sniped before that. Now the Disruptor shot is very close to going off. Tempest now can start pressuring, whether it's the Oracle or the Disruptors, to slowly start having to push back. And Lucky's kind of got his back up against a wall, Hope Bunny. Yeah, absolutely. With only four Disruptors here, uh, you know, he'll, he'll need some really nice shots to, in order to take an engagement, but he just... Oh, another nice shot to go off! Oh, and no blink from Lucky right there. Not quite paying attention to his army once again, and that is because there is an attack at the fourth base, but right now he's more worrying about this main army attack. Another couple Disruptors do go off, and simply Bales says so many more disruptors out on the map currently it is eight disruptors to the five of lucky and his fourth base was getting hit while all this was going down this little adept attack that moved in it is now starting to equalize out that worker count and he's not gonna have the economy advantage almost no advantage right now for our red protoss player lucky 
Yeah, and with the greater army supply for Bells, and more importantly, the greater army composition in a straight-up fight, these Tempests will be nice uh, if he can make use of them, but he hasn't been able to quite get off the amount of shots that he'd like. He lost his Oracles basically for free, hanging out around uh, the upper fourth base at one point, and Bales looks like he's trying to move in, but he does have to be really careful, can't blink forward. There are still enough disruptors for Lucky uh, that blinking forward would be absolutely deadly for Bales. And especially with about 18 Stalkers too, they can get right up underneath his Tempest in the wrong position. Oracle goes down, a couple more disruptor shots go out, and ooh, with it from Bale, but he has got a number of great disruptor shots, so it's not going to be that bad for him. Lucky has to pull back, and at this point, really, what is Lucky relying off of? I guess he does have a warp in the top right-hand corner. He's trying to do something with, trying to stop a fifth base from Bales, but at this point, he's just kind of surviving on. Another disruptor shot goes off, into the blink. There's the blink this time. A whole bunch of disruptors are super clumped up, though, and it could come down right to the wire right here if those if they come out, if those disruptors get shot. Fifth Nexus does go down for Bales at the top right corner. Now, Lucky's had a really hard time holding on to a fourth base, but, you know, now they've both comfortably stabilized on four bases, it looks like, although there are a couple of units from Bales at the bottom, and we look like we're going to maybe have an engagement here. Uh, these Tempests are doing quite a bit of work for Lucky. Uh, they're probably the reason that he's still in this game, is that yeah, he's able to, total. Uh, you know, weaken that army a little bit before a full-on engage, but without the Oracles, he's having a little bit of trouble making quite as much use of the Tempests as he'd like. You know, you'd really like to kind of put your opponent on a clock with those Tempests where they kind of have to engage you, but he hasn't been able to do that. And Bales is building up his own Tempest count. Uh, we've got three sitting in the end, four now, uh, and three Stargates constantly pumping out Tempests, so he will equalize that Tempest count real soon. Bales feeling very comfortable falling back onto the three Tempests at the same time, and this fourth base position that Lucky has not been able to solidify for a very long time. Bales does take another fifth base in the bottom left-hand corner, while Lucky pushes up into his fourth, and simply Bales is not going to engage. He wants to get up that... that Tempest count is currently 11 to 7. Three at a time, those going to even it out relatively quickly. And at the moment, we see almost double the income right now for Bales and a lot of these little engagements that he's got happening. Yeah, both of them actually... Pardon me, actually for Lucky right now, since he did snipe the base. Yeah, both of them actually getting up to that Tempest count where <laughs> there aren't actually enough oh, stalkers. Oh, the just go out. You're going to get the Immortals. Looks like they don't quite kill the Immortals. Yeah, there are enough Tempests out for both players at this point where, like... If the Stalkers were to fight the Tempests head-on, it doesn't seem like they'd actually win. So the Tempest battle is going to be really big here. Uh, and it looks like Bales is getting a superior vision, able to get off a few more shots, but he is down in Tempest. Bales blinking forward, but the Disruptor's not really in position for Lucky to counteract that. Yeah, the Disruptor's for a very long time with the only thing keeping the ground army from not moving forward, but now it is 140 armies of blood and 95. Big Disruptor shot goes down. A couple of Tempest or caught out of position, but now there's reinforcements from Lucky with the meager income that he has. Another couple of Disruptor shot goes off from Bales once again. I mean, total in this game, he must have killed 10 to 15 Disruptors in yeah. total. He's been sniped in the left and right, and each time that has happened because Lucky has had to commit his multitasking to different locations. Big Warpin on the left side, a DT and several Zealots for Lucky. Uh, he has managed to establish his fifth base as as well while Bells is trying to do so, but Bells only has 32 probes, so even if he establishes his fifth, his economy isn't going to be too great. Uh, as he did lose that fourth as well, so Lucky definitely sitting on a better economy here, and Bales is on the clock a little bit here with a lower, uh, I believe still lower Tempest count and a weaker economy. Nice revelation though, Bales knows where the main army of Lucky is, and that's going to be the signal for him to move into the fourth base in the bottom left hand corner, and there is one disruptor there for Bales, just kind of hanging about, I think it uh, did move in earlier with three adepts. <laughs> Ow. Some zealots moving into Bale's natural. Oh, he's actually going to pull back his whole army potentially to deal with these. Uh, and that, you know, that gives uh, Lucky plenty of time to reposition his army. He's losing even more of those ever important probes. Uh, those probes mining gas at the natural will go down. He'll be down to maybe 25 probes after all is said and done. He's moving towards the fourth now, choosing to go for the attack uh, now that he's really behind an economy. Oh, beautifully. Lucky baits out a couple of disruptor shots. Now it is even on Tempest. 12 to 12. Disruptor-wise, it is 5 to 7. Lucky does have the lead in disruptors. Finally, he's been able to secure that advantage back onto his side. At the same time, he has, of course, those warpins happening on the top left-hand side of the map. But for more, for now, it is really, you got to be focused on this main fight. Yeah, Tempest going down for both players. Bales actually takes the advantage in the Tempest count, although Lucky has two more on oh, the way. Oh, nice. that forward. It was a nice blink forward to pick off the Tempest uh, or two, uh, and he, you know, the Tempest count is really important here, but Lucky has still got units running wild in Bell's main, and Bell's just doesn't have the money to warp in units to fight this. So if Lucky can keep mining, even if he might lose the Tempest fight for a little bit, if he can warp in enough Stalkers, he might be able to deal with the Tempest 
when all is said and done, but it's really going to come down to these ground armies and this disruptor shop. Oh, some gutsy disruptors move out, but the Tempest is very close to being able to snipe them if they get a little bit too far out. One blink forward does bait out another disruptor shot, and now they are going to be reinforcing even more on the side of Lucky. It is 11 to 12. Lucky still has the, dis the Tempest lead. Disruptor's getting pretty gutsy again. You could see some blink forwards, but, you know, as you said, Bales can't reinforce these stalkers. He doesn't have the mobility that he would like to get straight on top of them, but he does have these Tempests. Oh, he gets so close. close. Lucky needs to start spreading those disruptors out before the main fight happens. Oh no! Lucky's disruptors all bite the dust here from some nice disruptor shots by Bales, and the Tempests are completely exposed. Stalkers move in, blink on top of the Tempests to give his own Tempest vision, and Lucky's Tempests are in full retreat. He warps in a bunch of gateway units. He does have the economy to continue reinforcing, but uh, army supply heavily in favor of Bales at this point, and he might just be able to ride this to a victory, even with his Nexuses falling. Uh, at the third base and production falling, everything's falling left and right for Bales, but he has the much bigger army. Yeah, Lucky needs to fall back and be very patient, keep reinforcing some stuff, but right now it's 105 army supply to the 60 of Lucky. One small step, and he's made lost almost everything to Disruptors. That's happened twice in this game. So many Disruptors have gone down, but it's now Tempest versus Tempest, and Bales does have the lead. Basically, he went in and hoped, you know, close, I, need, I need to count that there's one wrong step from Bales, or pardon me, Lucky, I need to count for that, and hey, it worked out. Focus completely on his army, didn't worry about anything back at home, and now looks like he's going to be able to overwhelm what Lucky has. Yeah, I'm not sure this game is quite done yet, as the Tempest count is going to be really low for Bales when this is over, even though it does look like he will uh, manage to kill all the Tempests of Lucky. Uh, his base is falling, he's barely mining, Lucky will maybe be able to get out enough Stalkers elsewhere on the map that he might be able to deal with the rest of these Tempests. Uh, it's, I mean, Lucky's got units in the top right. Uh, in Bale's third, still killing assimilators. He's warped in some more on the left side, going into the fifth. Uh, he's got units everywhere, uh, and if he can pull these together and continue to, uh, you know, make Bale's life difficult, he could come out on top. But the main army for Bale's is just completely overpowering at this point. Yeah, you know, what's nice for Lucky is he does have the eight stalkers out of the map, but not only does he have that, but he's got plus three and plus one armor, which is better than the ground upgrades that Bales currently has. So he could take some engagements if he manages to section off the army of Bales, but Bales just currently shut down the entire production that Lucky's been relying off of for the majority of this game. He's going right for the heart of everything he can get to. And looks like, at the same time, Lucky's trying to kill as much as he can, but he doesn't quite have the DPS that Bales is currently dishing out onto this map. Yeah, with the complete lack of production for Lucky at this point, he hasn't rebuilt gateways anywhere on the map. I'm not sure what his plan is here. He does look to be going for some sort of a base trade with his remaining gateway units, but I just don't think it's enough to fight this army when push comes to shove. Uh, he does have three nexuses, three mining bases on the map right now. Bales is just one, uh, but it will take more than that to finish off. Bales' army. Yeah, at the moment, it's roughly 1,700 minerals a minute to 300 of Bales' luck. He does have that advantage, and he's trying to grasp onto his tournament life right here. It is one to one, and she's definitely a summer 2016 round of eight. I love that one immortal from Bales. Sending it over yeah, there wow. to start working on that nexus, just making sure that he's slowly getting rid of all the buildings that Lucky has in this base trade situation. Looks like the Devs get straight on top of the stalkers of Lucky half a second, and then he blinks, but he still sustains damage from that. I don't really want to know. Oh, oh big disruptor shot, disruptor. but I don't know if you want to lure those Adepts into one of your mining bases right here. That's one of his last mining bases. Adepts yeah. get there. There may be 43 probes, but those Adepts will make mincemeat out of that mineral line. Right now, Lucky is not going to give up. It's one-to-one. -one, so close. They can more than double their money if they get to the next round right here and win this game. Yeah, Lucky definitely looks like he's almost out of it here. Gateway units do get cleaned up in the main. Probes get cleaned up at this uh, east base, I guess. Uh, and GG! Bales! Two-to-one! Takes the final game wow. and moves on to the semifinals of Gizadelphia Summer 2016. Look at that grin on his face. Yeah. There's the handshake from Lucky, a great guy. But there's two huge disruptor shots that went down, and literally one disruptor took out four or five. Yeah. And then Lucky simply had to give up a base. He had to sacrifice his economy, which he had a lead in, as you pointed out, right. for a long time. And he even had the upgrade lead in the ground army, but he lost disruptor after disruptor in a lot of those fights, paying yeah. attention to his little attacks in the top left to pull Bales back. There were definitely two or three big disruptors disruptor hits by Bales on Lucky's disruptors that really made the difference in that game, allowing Bales to really take a commanding position with his army and shut down Lucky's superior economy. Uh, really close, well-played game, though, by both sides. Uh, there were definitely a lot of moments in that game where we felt like uh, the lead was shifting back and forth or just very unclear. Mm -hmm. So it was a very exciting series, very exciting game to watch, really yeah. close ma closely matched. Thank you for casting Poke Bunny. I really appreciate it.
It's no been a problem. pleasure to cast alongside you with your analytical prowess. And right here we have True versus Bales, which will probably be coming up next. But we also have Kelazur, Virium, Poke Bunny, and Poke Bunny versus Ruff, which we will cast those other two semifinals, or pardon me, round of eights, coming right up relatively shortly. This is Gizadelphia Summer 2016. But Poke Bunny, if they want to know more about you, how do they check you out? Uh... You can follow me on Twitter at PokeBunny. Uh, I also stream pretty often uh, on Twitch. I'm a high-level Terran player uh, at twitch.tv slash PokeBunny. Uh, and basically, if you look at PokeBunny and you were on the internet, it's probably me. Just Google it up. That's very <laughs> funny. You'll figure so it out. So you should be able to find me if you are so inclined. I haven't done any commentary in a long time, but I really enjoyed this, and I would love to get back into it. So and thanks Tempo, a lot. And I can't wait for your rough versus PokeBunny. It's going to be a TVT casted in a relatively short time. Thank you for commentary, casting, and guys, we'll see you after this very short break. This is Cheesadelphia Summer 2016. We'll see you soon.